So in today's tutorial, I'm going to use Inkscape to show you how you can take a text object, or any vector object for that matter, and use it to create the illusion that you've carved it into a piece of wood, similar to what you see here on my screen. And in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download the wood9.png image. I've included a link to that in the description, so just go ahead and download that image and save it into a folder where you can easily access it. And the font I'm using here is called Pacifico. I've included a link to that in the description as well if you'd like to download and install that font and follow along with this. Otherwise, you could use any font you'd like. So with that being said, let's close out of this and get started. I already have Inkscape open. I'm just going to take this image and I'm going to click and drag it into Inkscape. And click OK so it imports. I'm going to maximize the window. Go to View. Make sure you have Custom selected. And then we're going to come over here to the Align and Distribute menu and open that up. And make sure you have Last Selected chosen from this drop-down menu. And then we'll go to the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke, and we'll open up that menu. And here we have our image. Make sure you're zoomed in at one-to-one. -one. You can go to View, Zoom, and Zoom in at one-to-one. -one. Just like that. And I'm actually going to open up forgot to open up my keyboard menu. I'm going to open up my keyboard menu here. So this, this little window right here, you can see whichever mouse clicks and keyboard strokes I'm using in case you don't catch what I say. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up our, um, we'll create some text. We'll create and edit text objects. We'll click on the canvas and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to write carve. Carve. And we go to the text editor and find that font we downloaded, Pacifico, there it is. And click Apply, we can close out of that menu. And I'm going to turn that blue, and then I'm going to come to the arrow up here, and then I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard, and I'm going to scale this thing up. We want this to be pretty big. And I'm going to put this on top of the image. About that big, I'd say, is good. Then I'll go to Path, Object to Path, and then we'll ungroup it, and then we'll go to Path and Union to turn that into a path because we're going to manipulate this a little bit. So once we've done that, with this text object selected, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the wood image so I have them both selected. I'm going to center it up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, kind of like that. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this on just this word here and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to come over to the create uh, rectangles and squares tool and I'm going to create a rectangle going over this thing. I'm going to turn that rectangle black and then I'll come back to the arrow and I'm going to click the button that says lower selection one step. Click on that and then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the word carve and let's go to path difference and then I'm going to take this black image and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and I'm going to click and drag this down a little bit down to about there you want to bring that down about that much and then I'll click this blue word carve and I'll right click it and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on our black rectangle and go to object clip and then set. And then I'm going to come over here to the blur. I'm going to give that a one point blur. I'm just going to type in one and hit enter. And that's going to kind of create the illusion that we have an inner shadow going on there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and roll down on the mouse wheel to zoom out. I'm going to click on this wood image and I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate and take this duplicated copy and move this off to the side. Now we're going to play with this a little bit. I'm using the center mouse wheel. I'm pressing down on the mouse wheel to pan the page around. So with this selected, we're going to go to Extension, Raster, and go to HSB Adjust. And the input values you'll want here are 0, 0, and negative 50. And once you have those values set, just go ahead and click Apply. And then we can close out of that menu. And then let's click on this blue this blue copy right here. You could tell, be careful not to select the shadow. You could see down here this black stripe, it means I selected the shadow. I want to select the blue word text. There it is. Let's raise that to the top and then let's right click that and go to duplicate 
and then hold shift and click on our copy of the wood image here and center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then go to object clip and set and then I'm going to take this this image right here I'm gonna hold shift and click on our original wood image I'm gonna center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and that's going to disappear beneath that blue copy but that's alright so just click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's click on this blue copy right here and let's right click that and go to duplicate and we'll turn that white and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this copy down to about here I want to bring that down about let's say about that much and then we can come up here to where it says lower selection one step we can click that once to put that below the blue copy and then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the blue copy and go to path difference and we're gonna make the opacity on this 20 so just go over to the opacity and type in 20 maybe um, I don't know that's not too maybe 25 alright 25 is good and then let's click on this copy up here, this, this uh, carve of the, uh, the darker image we just used. And let's take that and let's lower that one step with that button right there. And there you pretty much have it. That's how, um, as you can see, we're finished. That's how you could take a vector object and make it look like you've carved it into a piece of wood using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll gladly help you out. And as always, thank you for watching.